is the Director of Product Marketing for ADP Data Cloud, a people analytics solution designed to give organizations an edge delivering actionable insights. Imran plays a pivotal role in helping businesses understand the value of data analytics and how to best leverage them to improve outcomes. After spending more than 12 years in product management and product marketing, Imran brings passion to the message that artificial intelligence and machine learning not only help reduce administrative tasks, but also help attract top talent, which is vital in today's diverse labor market. He brings the philosophy to life. Strong technology in the hands of a strong partnership will ultimately drive business success for any organization. At ADP, Imran's understanding of data cloud has been a key to enabling others to harness the power of data. Welcome, Imran. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today on my session on optimizing data and AI in times of change. My name is Imran Ahmed, and I am the Director of Product Marketing for ADP Data Cloud, an award-winning people analytics solution designed to give organizations an edge and delivering actionable insights. In today's session, I'm going to talk to you about how to demystify data and reveal its true potential. So beyond the average insights, AI can provide businesses with access to recommendations that help simplify complex decisions, provide business outcomes using data and AI. So even before global events shifted the world and the workforce, winning business strategies were built on data-based decisions. A recent global survey found companies that harness big data saw as much as an 8% increase in revenue and 10% reduction in costs. Today, leverage, leveraging decision quality data and artificial intelligence are more important than ever. So in this session, I'm going to really reveal true potential as a resource to help organization navigate today's landscape. So beyond those average insights, AI can provide businesses with access to recommendations that help those that help simplify those complex business decisions to help understand scarce resources and how they actually should be allocated and then actually how to schedule tasks and how to deal with constraints. AI right now is always evolving. So technology is always changing, new trends are always merging. This is how we think of AI, something that will always grow as years to come. And sometimes it'll grow faster than the times that we currently live in. Sometimes you see AI before its time, and that's okay, because they're always early, early adopters and late adopters of technology. Organizations should start to think about how to harness the potential of artificial intelligence. But also organizations will need to think at how humans and machines can work together in this fast paced changing environment. Implementation of AI across organizations can help them make those better decisions supported by data driven insights. Going beyond the simple insights that get shown to you, AI can help organizations so much. More. AI is built from data, data, and upon more data to help derive those insights. But let me explain. But let me first talk about myths of AI. So perhaps you've heard of these myths, or perhaps not. It's always good to level set to make sure that robots, robots aren't actually taking over the world. So first we have AI, which is artificial intelligence, machine learning, and, de and deep learning. And everyone thinks they're all the same. Essentially, they're not really all the same. AI serves up insights to humans to make those decisions, where machine learning solves specific AI tasks, so learning from that data. And deep learning uses neural ne networks, such as those algorithms, where they can learn by experience and acquire new skills without the need for human involvement. Pretty cool, right? Second, AI learns on its own. No humans need it. Well, that's not really true. AI is trained on historical data and when, it, when it's running. It uses data to make those observations. You can get back on, you can get feedback on the model 
retrain it and improve it from its mistakes. But this is not happening in real time or automatically. The human has to actually go back and make those changes. Thirdly, AI will replace human workers. I love this one because everyone will, will turn to the movies such as Terminator, iRobot, or my favorite Iron Man. And we see humans doing all sorts of, we see AI doing all sorts of human tasks. AI and humans are meant to work together. Sure, AI will replace some tasks that humans are doing, but then think about it. This will allow humans to focus on er other areas to be more strategic and where they can do more, make more better business decisions. So the evolution of AI. Gartner has described the evolution of AI in three stages, and all three of them make sense. The first one being assisted intelligence, the first step of tracking data to help humans make decisions. This, in my mind, is the most common of the three. The second one, we have augmented intelligence, an explosion of machine learning data augmented to make human decisions. And lastly, autonomous intelligence, truly automated processes that humans can rely on. So I'm going to walk you through how these three can be spread across your organization to help simplify those complex problems from planning, dealing with data quality situations, automating tasks, understanding sales, HR, all of it, we're going to go through it. So in this visualization, vis visualization, I created an image of an organization as a circle. We have product, service, HR, finance, sales, and implementation. So as you can see, this organization sits on a tremendous amount of data, both internally and externally. Internally being such as the number of clients they have, you know, who they sold to, tagging key attributes to those to those clients. So you can help predict and build models off lookalike clients. So you can sell solutions to those similar clients in the field. Externally, we collect, you know, buyer behaviors, you know, what songs consumers like to listen to, what movies they like to watch. All this AI revolves around the data. And that means good data. Imagine if your organization is inputting bad data. These insights that would be serving up would be incorrect, hence the need for good data. With that, let's dive into the first phase. Here's a question for you. Did you know you're probably using assisted intelligence today without even knowing it? Or maybe you did know it. But a great example is Siri, a helpful assistant magically living inside your iPhone, has the capability to read your emails aloud to you, your text messages aloud to you, and even ask it to find the nearest pizza place. This is assisted intelligence. Now, AI doesn't seem that scary, does it? So when we talk about assisted intelligence, it means the tracking of data across your organization and showing potential risks, from performance to security breaches. Now, organizations are turning to AI to help their business operationally. So for instance, if you look at e-commerce websites, one of the biggest organizations using AI today, they analyze you know, past transactions, persona attributes, search trends, and these AI systems can predict over 90% accuracy of what products will be sold within the next 30 days. And then they can have the fulfillment get automatically purchased and sent to those warehouses so they're ready. In the first phase, we want to know how businesses can start leveraging assisted intelligence and using it in their day-to-day -day environment. So organizations are starting to adapt to assisted intelligence. And a great example is in the world of recruiting. Hiring, developing employees can now take place with a simple process that doesn't require any specialized knowledge of data analytics or any actual changes to the recruitment process. There are many examples out there, but then one I really wanted to highlight on is high turnover within the organization or perhaps a specific department. The challenge is, is that organizations want to identify qualities and behaviors of their top performers. 
so they could recruit similar top performers with the same attribute. Makes sense, right? Higher top performers based on current top performers. Yeah. The AI is able to accurately match over 90% and identify appropriate top performers that are great matches for the organization of similar candidates that performed well. That means organizations can start to hire top performers with ease. Wow, it sounds so simple. But now you think about it, organizations are starting to slowly use AI in these innovative ways. In the world of HR and hiring talent, AI will be increasing, helping organizations build higher quality pipelines, paired with smart source matching, helping those recruiters reduce their time by over 20% with this simple solution. ways. Remember a world when you had to have a book of maps in the back of your car and you were driving down to Florida and your parents would be like, where are we going? And then you'd be sitting in a traffic jam for a couple hours and you didn't know there was a traffic jam up ahead and you couldn't read the map fast enough so you couldn't find an alternative route. Yeah, those were the days. Now we have ways. Solves those traffic burdens of finding us the shortest route to get to our destination you know, predicting traffic times, predict, predicting patterns in the traffic, letting you know when to leave, when not to leave, giving us that data to make the decision of the optimal time to leave, to avoid all the traffic. That's augmented intelligence, giving you the data to make those decisions. Or Spotify, you know, telling you what music or what playlist you like based on the music you've been listening to week after week serving up those recommendations right there. So you say, oh, I never knew this playlist that was coming out. And you really like it because it's based on your previous genres you like. The AI is already helping you make your life a little bit easier. Back to our circle of life. Augmented intelligence is essentially machine learning, helping organizations augment human business decisions. Let me say that again. Machine learning helping organizations augment human business decisions. So the amount of data we consume and build out in a meaningful way is limited by ourselves as humans. That's no knock on humans. We're extremely smart people. But machine learning has no limits and can build out business insights in order for organizations to make those strategic business decisions, which could lead to increase in sales, over the bottom line, increased productivity across the board. The way augmented intelligence has the ability to gather data from all these sources ac across siloed systems and present the data in a way that gives humans a complete 360 degree view of their organization. That's extremely cool. The insights extracted from the dat that data and presented to the user is deeper and greater than ever before. So as a result, organizations are able to make more accurate business decisions backed by data. Combining both the help of AI, humans can use this talk technology together. So going back to this organizational circle, I touched on HR in the first phase. But in this phase, I wanted to take a look at sales and how a sales department can leverage augmented intelligence to help drive productivity, improve efficiency, and ultimately save organizational dollars. Let's get in it. When organizations adopt augmented intelligence, they're able to make smarter selling decisions and waste less time on those repetitive administrative tasks, which can now be automated. A great example in sales are those CRM tools. Using AI and CRM tools can help sales analyze the data in their systems. It can also help them translate that data into those that actionable insights, which can help sales representatives in any sales cycle they're in. So here's a scenario in which organizations can leverage CR tools to help them close a sale. So picture a sales representative leaving a meeting 
and the prospect becomes reluctant to continue with the sales process. Tough, right? The data collected from the sales rep can be put into the CRM tool to look at the behaviors and factors that might affect the change of behavior. Perhaps the price was too high. Perhaps the product description wasn't good enough. Maybe there was a lack of functionality. How do we know without asking the prospect? And we don't want to ask the prospect this question. So an AI CRM tool can take these all into account from past and present prospects and clients and then determine that maybe it was a lack of functionality or a lack of future features. Perhaps the data shows that the customer's buying behavior is driven looking at the product roadmap and understanding the future of the product. Ah, now the salesperson can pivot and focus on the future of the product and where it's headed and can fill in the gaps with the product roadmap. So had the salesperson not used the data in the AI CRM tool and analyzing past and present information, the sale could have been lost. But this is just a simple example of how data collected, AI analyzed and extracted into a form that sales could articulate. Organizations taking this approach, ensuring data is collected, is good data, and the systems they have in place help sales teams make real-time decisions on deals and help the organization as a whole. As I come from the world of HR, I think it's fair to share an example of how augmented intelligence is used in HR as well. As the world is currently changing, positions are evolving, I feel organizations are adapting to new technologies. Imagine, you have a workforce of 10,000 employees. You are the manager of a department and you have roughly 200 reports that are directly or indirectly reporting up to you. Could you tell me your turnover rate? Could you tell me your involuntary turnover rate or even your voluntary turnover rate? If you can, you've been using augmented intelligence and you've adopted this technology to do so. If not, let me explain how organizations can leverage this AI to make those better business decisions. So the combination of augmented intelligence and human intellect makes HR processes even more successful and easier than ever before. So that's why you're hearing about companies having saved hundreds of thousands of dollars by looking at the simplest things in the organization, such as turnover rate. When organizations think of retaining employees, the organizations have to have the data in place such as, is, is it of a certain manager? Is the department creating a bad environment? Is it the training policies they have in place? Is it their compensation package aligned to the industry's competitive enough? All these decisions require careful consideration and of course, accurate data. So let's look at compensation for a minute. You know, when we're looking at compensation, we're always looking at what the market rate is for, for certain skills for jobs, how demand are those skills in, in, the, in the workforce? Do we know if it's better to reward strong performance based on, is it base salary, is it bonuses, is it stock options? You know, what are other organizations doing? Can we compare to them? How, how do we have this information? So to make the best decision for your organization, you need a deep understanding of all the employee skills. So mapping their journey throughout their career progression of the organization. Are these skills increasing or decreasing in demand? An AI supported compensation tool can lead to thousands of hours of analysis and time reduced just to a couple. So I'm going to repeat that. An AI supported compensation tool can lead to thousands of hours of analysis and time reduced just to a couple. Like, it's awesome. So while providing those insights, to help organizations make these decisions, the ability to examine many, many more variables than they previously were before. So AI is applying the data within the organization to help make those more informed decisions with the ultimate goal of achieving more efficient outcomes. So using AI with compensation is shaped to reward its employees. So when you base the skills and jobs on the accuracy of the data, 
and the compensation levels you see in the industry, you're achieving better business outcomes with the end goal of creating a more valuable organization for you and your employees. driving cars but let's be honest the first thing you think of autonomous intelligence self-driving cars you plug in your destination and the car will drive itself there without any action from you yeah i'm in so but when you think about it from an organization standpoint you think well wait i'll have to go through phases one and two in order to get to three but that's of course true but i also feel that organizations won't truly be fully autonomous because then we would be irrelevant and that defeats this whole presentation. But I think autonomous intelligence will take us to the next level. It's the ability in which you can process and digitize anything and it's automated. So for example, chatbots, where these systems can directly make decisions based on the data around them and put it into them. Cool. I want to discuss chatbots for the next five minutes. In today's world, when you go into a website, whether it's an e-commerce website, corporate website, or even a hospitality website, you'll be greeted with a hello there in the bottom right-hand corner. The use of these chatbots is becoming more and more accessible, and there's hundreds and thousands of possibilities with the use of them. You may be thinking, Aren't these chatbots taking over human interactions and replacing our jobs? I wouldn't say so. But I do think these chatbots are simply taking over simple tasks and intercepting those questions that can easily be answered. You know, what time are you closing? Where is your, where's your nearest store to me? Or I want to contact customer support. What's the number? These are the first line customer questions that can now alleviate employees to deal with and they can now focus on more of those complex customer questions where they are more creating more value now for the organization by solving those customer needs. As I referenced earlier, AI and humans are now working together. So I'm going to highlight a scenario of how organizations and AI are using to enhance in their organization. Chatbots are now able to handle those simple tasks that I described before that occur every time you receive a phone call collecting the basic customer information, or incorporating that information and data needed to handle those customer requests. Now the chatbot has a job to do. It needs to pass this information on to the right department and the right customer service rep who has their appropriate technical knowledge to handle, handle the customer request. The advantage of this is that the chatbot is able to put all the right information to the agent so they can start helping right away. It always provides the customer with satisfaction with that seamless transition. So the, an AI system integrated in the chatbot of a CRM system can leverage all the right data about the customer's history, how many times the customer has called, issues they had in the past, what systems are, the, are they on. But also, AI can serve up these insights so that the company has, has taken to resolve similar issues, like lookalikes from other companies who've had experienced the same issue. And this can help the customer service rep resolve the problem during that phone call, rather than having to call or, or do a follow-up. You can do it in real time right there with all the data served up right there. Pretty cool, huh? I spoke about AI and chatbots, but I wanted to touch on RPA or robotic process automation. So RPA is a software robot. No, don't think iRobot, the one that goes around in your house, or don't think iRobot, the one that Will Smith stars in. But RPA mimics human actions. So this is an automated process driven when coupled with AI can save organizations enormous amounts of time. RPA performs the same task over and over again. They don't need to learn as they repeat the same task and they won't improvise or come up with a more efficient way because they've been programmed to automate a simple task. So I find RPA can benefit organizations in three ways, speed, accuracy, and employee productivity. 
when we go back to speed, it has the ability to complete tasks five times faster, five times faster while improving efficiency. It can also improve accuracy. So reducing human error, you know, such as input values or wrong mapping. Oh, I meant to click three, but I clicked four, you know, those sort of, sort of human errors. And also it improves, improves employee productivity. So reducing those repetitive tasks so employees can focus on more strategic business goals. So let's look at a scenario where RPA is used in organizations. You know, in healthcare, organizations can use RPA from patient, patient registration. In banking, can be used from setting up an account to card activation. In HR, payroll processing to onboarding employees. All of these follow exact workflows, which are repetitive tasks and can be used across an organization. So as I like to call it, auto magic onboarding or automatic onboarding. When a new hire is offered a job, there are a lot of steps in needing to get them set up. But the first step, no, it's not the interview, it's after the interview, it's sending out that offer letter. So this is generated and set out in approved format by an organization. So once the new hire sets up their account, a number of predetermined workflows are set up for them to follow. So the RPA system can be configured by the organization so it can follow the rules to make sure it matches the employee's profile. Organizations onboarding workflows will all vary. So depending on the business, the positions they're hiring for, the level of system access they need, it's all determined on the jobs they're getting being hired for. For example, a software developer has to be granted right access to JIRA to log user stories and bugs. They have to be access to software platform, release management systems. This process allows them to be set up properly from day one and ensuring they have all the proper access permissions rather than having to wait for someone to turn something on for them or check a box for them. Now it can be all automated through that workflow. And this workflow can ensure that employees has the ability to finish all their training within the first few weeks and to make sure they follow the organization's regulations and understanding the organization's policies. The end goal is to ensure employees have a great first experience. And an RPA system will allow organizations to ensure all employees can get up, set up properly from day one, ensuring all documentation is needed and is not missed or neglected by both the employee and the organization. But it follows the appropriate workflows organizations set up, making sure all the checks and balances are put in place. Organizations that implement the RPA system coupled with AI, we'll start to understand that these strategies will continue to evolve, both from a technology standpoint, but also an organizational standpoint, allowing them to streamline approaches and hire, retain, and keep their business growing with the times. The end goal is to demystify the data and reveal its true potential across the organization and how humans AI can work together in order to make those better business decisions. After talking through assisted intelligence, augmented intelligence, and autonomous intelligence, you're probably wondering, what can I achieve with AI? Will I be competitive? Where do I start? All these ideas are going through your mind. AI is something that needs to be addressed for a business goal. You know, you can't just say, I'm gonna to start tomorrow. Organizations, you need to think about what you're trying to do. Are you trying to reduce costs? Are you trying to increase productivity, ramp up hiring? You know, you have the ability to choose any one of these solutions to address any issue you want across your organization. Being always sure to set up an end goal in mind in which you're able to show a detailed view of a before and after with clear goals and milestones that you hit with the implementation of AI. Simply introducing AI 
won't, won't make you competitive. Sure, you'll have a bit of fancy new technology, but you need to be understanding of what you're trying to get at. You have to look at the whole picture, the industry you're in. Are you a B2C industry? Are you a B2B industry? You want to look at what competitors are doing and assess the situation. You don't want to just dive in without looking at around your surroundings. Perhaps start with a pilot program in a department. You know, assess how that, that performs, what's working, what's not. Ensure you have the right resources in place in order to meet your goals that you have set out within this program. Like I said, at the beginning, AI is always evolving. It will never be finished and it will continue to be enhanced. And there's no problem starting small. With that, I hope I left you with the various techniques in which AI is used across organizations. And I hope I provided you with more insight or just resurfaced some ideas that had your mind lingering about whether or not you're just, this is right for your organization. With that, thank you so much and have a lovely day. Thank you, Imran, for covering some practical examples. You can use artificial intelligence to augment decision support. If anybody would like to ask any questions of Imran, you can join him in the speaker Q&A section. Thank you.